Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Bell unveils full-scale design of air taxi at CES. EAA Aviation Museum receives international recognition. USPA reports improved accident rates. Welcome to your Friday edition of Airborne Unlimited. I'm your host, Skylar Vanell. Our top story today, Bell Helicopter revealed the configuration and full-scale vertical takeoff and landing air taxi vehicle at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. The air taxi named Bell Nexus is powered by a hybrid electric propulsion system and features Bell's signature powered lift concept. It incorporates six tilting ducted fans that are designed to safely and efficiently redefine air travel. Team Nexus is a group collaboration of some of the most well-known names in the industry. Bell will lead the design, development, and production of the VTOL systems. Saffron will provide the hybrid propulsion and drive systems. EPS will provide the energy storage systems. Thales will provide the flight control computer hardware and software. Moog will develop the flight control systems. And Garmin will integrate the avionics and the vehicle management computer. Alongside the debut of Nexus, Bell will feature the Pod Transport, which is a new venture for Bell. The ATP family varies in payload capability and can be used in a variety of ways. From medical to law enforcement, offshore missions, and even on-demand delivery services. Bell's Future Flight Controls Simulator is a new experience for CES participants this year. Data from these simulators will be used to determine what actions and interfaces are intuitive to the average operator. And what prior experiences and abilities contribute to these opinions. After the break, Marble, Massachusetts Airport is sold to a developer as we take you around the patch. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115 horsepower turbocharged airplane at airplanefactory.com. Welcome back. The oldest privately owned commercial airport in the state of Massachusetts has been sold to a developer who plans to build an industrial park on the property. Sandy Stetson sold the 96-year-old airport to Capital Group Properties for $2.25 million. Stetson and her late husband Bob purchased the airport back in 1999. About 1,800 cabin crew at Pakistani International Airlines recently received a company memo telling them to be cautious about their weight. The company gave them six months to get their weight in check with the company's requirements or they could risk being pulled off the line. The memo said any crew found above 30 pounds from the desired weight after January 31st will be grounded and referred to Air Crew Medical Center for medical evaluation and have treatment until weight is reduced to the desired standard BMI. Five people will be recognized and inducted into Canada's Aviation Hall of Fame for their contribution to Canadian aviation. This year's event will mark the 46th annual celebration of aviation accomplishments and will bring the number of Canadians installed as members of the hall to 237. The annual event will be held on May 16th at Montreal's International Airport. Three civil aviation authorities have issued STCs to Duncan Aviation. The upgrade of the Honeywell Primus 2 system for ADSB out on the Cessna 560 models and on the Hawker 800 series aircraft was officially approved, but it was FAA approved back in 2015. The STCs have been accepted by Transport Canada, Mexico's DGAC, and EASA. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. EAA Aviation Museum in Oshkosh has been selected as one of the top 20 best aviation museums around the world. It's quite an honor for some place like CNN Travel, which has the opportunity to reach out to people worldwide and take a look at attractions worldwide. 
to include us on their list of top 20 aviation museums in the world. Uh, we know we're a great source of pride for EAA members, but to be named on something like that with museums in 11 different countries it is quite an honor, and we're very proud of it and a little bit humbled, too. Among the newest exhibits is the Borman Collection, which houses many of the personal archives and memorabilia of Gemini 7 and Apollo 8 Commander Frank Borman. The gallery opened in early December and promises to attract even more visitors to the museum. We have a number of events each month here at the museum where people can come in, enjoy the museum, whether they're from the local area or from any place across the country. After the break, the United States Parachuting Association has seen a decline in accident rates. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. All forms of aviation and sports have their hazards, but when there's an increase in their safety record, everyone should take notice. According to the U.S. Parachuting Association, they reached a historic low. Last year, only 13 skydiving fatalities were recorded in the U.S. Since 1961, they have kept a log of these fatalities, except for jumps that are being conducted under military orders. The first year they saw 14 deaths, the number of annual fatalities steadily climbed, and in 1981 they hit an all-time high of 56. Since then, there has been a drop in the annual number of people who have died. This number marks the first year they have seen a number so low. The fatality rate is estimated to be roughly one in every 246,000 jumps. Well, that wraps up today's show. If you have a story suggestion, send us an email at news-spy at arrow-news.net. You can watch Airborne Unlimited on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays with Airborne Unmanned on Tuesday and the AMA Drone Report each Thursday. Follow us on social media and for real-time 24-7 coverage of all the latest aviation stories, you can head on over to aero-news.net. From all of us here at Airborne Unlimited, thanks for watching and we'll see you back on Monday. <music>